honest. Not George W. Yeah. Not Laura Bush, not Barbara Bush. Not Laura or Barbara Bush. And I always feel like that was a telltale sign that Melania was like the first pro-life. Melania is the first like first lady who was actually anti-abortion. Um, I thought that was significant because I there's a more than small part of me that thinks that Reagan, George W. and George H. W. were all phonies about the abortion issue. There, there's a very small part of me that sort of thinks that. Given that Reagan had this magical conversion right when he ran for president, and he, he signed the first law ever in the history of the United States to legalize abortion when he was governor of California, uh, and then all of a sudden he's pro-life. Uh, George W. and George H. W. Their wives are both. Pro- anyway, th- this is me going into John Girardi conspiracy theory mode. This is these are not the views of Right to Life of Central California. Anyway, um, so. Ron DeSantis does not seem to be in that mold. It seems like he sincerely th- views the abortion issue as central to his governance and as a really critical, important issue that a Republican governor should focus on. And if you're not willing to fight on that issue, uh, what are what are you willing to fight on? So what we're seeing right now, I think it's more and more clear in the Republican primary field, is the only the, – the, it's either going to be Trump or DeSantis – I don't think there's really I, hey, John, much of an argument for anyone else. Let's not discount that whirling dervish of raw political charisma, Asa, Asa Hutchinson. Well, yes. Former Asa, governor of, uh, Arkansas. of Arkansas. Oh, whom, man. Whom, John, I have to tell you, I, I think the entire Hutchinson family might wind up voting for him. I was in Maybe. a room. He, he came and spoke before he announced for president. Mm-hmm. I was in South Carolina a few weeks ago. He spoke on stage at this uh, Vision 24 Leadership Forum. Mm. And I have to tell you, uh, that was definitely a speech that I have heard. (laughs) It It, was one of the speeches in my life that I have heard. (laughs) Several people (laughs) also acknowledged it as a speech. (laughs) I will will say it would have helped with the jet lag the night before when we landed. (laughs) So, yeah, uh, I, I find the odds of... You could have heard a pin drop because there was no one in the room listening to it. <laughs> oh, poor, I would say poor Asa Hutchinson, but um, I think he kind of deserves all the mockery he gets. Anyway, uh, Right to Life of Central California is a 501c3 organization that does not endorse or oppose candidates for political office. Anyway, as as I, is California we are, Family Council. We, just, are, we, are, we are only saying... As realistic observers of the political landscape, Asa Hutchinson has no shot. The only realistic winners of the Republican nomination will be Ron DeSantis or Donald Trump. And what we are seeing is that within the mainstream of the Republican Party, if you are not aggressively committed to the pro-life cause, it it seems as though you don't have a shot at winning the presidency. I will say... It seems as though. There is one... uh, And and we do say this, by the way, as being on record that there were a lot of things Trump could have yes. done and should have done better while he was president. And, and not, we're not saying that these two guys are absolutely immaculate, but you know, Trump you know, got Roe v. Wade overturned. That's a pretty significant accomplishment. Well, and John, I will say to further your point, um, there is one, uh, <clears throat> dark horse candidate for, uh, the Republican nominee who I do, he, who was not announced yet, but mm-hmm. I do think if Trump and DeSantis falter, I do think, that uh, Republican senator from South Carolina, Tim Scott, is maybe the only other candidate that could potentially have a, a serious chance. Uh, I think serious is overstating it. I, I, I think, think he could have, I think he has a chance of being picked as someone's vice oh, presidential I think, nominee. I think that's very likely. <laughs> yeah. But yeah. yeah. But I'll just say that the, the reason I bring it up is that he is a player in the game. He is a player in the game. And, more so than Asa Hutchinson. And, and, and significantly, he, I think, has been much more consistently doctrinaire on the life issue. That's true. I, I, I That's don't true. think there is any candidate that is considering running or that is floated with running that is not avowedly pro-life that even has a shot at, at yeah. making a dent. Well, Larry Hogan kind of toyed with it, but he he wound up not running. Yeah, and, and, and I think it's because he knows yeah. he can't win without the pro-lifers. Right, exactly. So, And, and that's one of the frustrating things in this kind of political alignment is that I think for years you had Republicans who just relied on pro-life votes but didn't really deep down care about you know delivering policy results. And... It was always within the Republican Party. There was the the three-legged stool is what they referred referred to it. It was kind of fiscal conservatives and business interests. There were sort of foreign policy hawks and anti-communists. And then there were the social conservatives. 
And I think the Barry Goldwaters of the world tolerated the social conservatives with a kind of pat on the head and say, yes, yes, there you go, Pat Robertson. Yes, yes, we definitely value you. Now we're going to run and absolutely not listen to anything you have to say. Uh, And I I think that dynamic is shifting. So anyway, kudos to uh, the state legislature in Florida for being about to pass a six-week abortion ban. That's a really significant thing. Now, the problem we are seeing around the country with states now having the ability to pass laws to limit abortion. I I think there are sort of two problems. One is we are seeing a lot of statewide referenda and ballot initiatives regarding abortion that are being framed as sort of all or nothing on abortion and the pro-life side keeps losing. So not only in the 2022 election where uh, California passed Prop 1, obviously horrible, but also you had more conservative states like Kansas tried to pass a law to allow their state legislature to limit abortion. It got defeated. Um, Kentucky tried to pass a law to let to uh, limit abortion. That got defeated in a statewide election. And Jonathan, it seems like Wisconsin may be in a similar boat. So Wisconsin, yes. they have elections for their state Supreme Court justices. Which is just very weird. I, I, I know we kind of have elections out here, but just the idea of electing Supreme Court justices. Yeah, well, it's more like the in California, you just confirm a pick that the governor has made. Uh, we, we don't really elect our Supreme Court justices. So right now, the Wisconsin S- state Supreme Court, so every state Supreme Court, or at least most of them anyway, I believe, have seven members. And if this particular woman who's running for the state Supreme Court in Wisconsin winds up winning, it will shift the balance of power on the Wisconsin Supreme Court and could result in their state Supreme Court holding that the Wisconsin state constitution protects the right to abortion. Now, I, you know, I think I'm going to lead into this in the, into the next segment where I'm going to explain this. How basically our defeat of Roe v. Wade... And now the ability of state legislatures to limit abortion is being frustrated by a bunch of little mini Roe v. Wades in the various states. I'll explain that right after the break. This is Right to Life Radio on Power Talk. 